Today we're going to learn about rational numbers and how to compare them. Um, but first let's talk about some vocab words. Okay, so we already learned what integers are. We know what whole numbers are. We learned that in elementary school. And today we're going to talk about rational numbers, which we already know what they are. We just might not have ever heard that word used to describe them. So let's talk about whole numbers. Whole numbers are any positive number including zero. Okay, so some examples would be like 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Okay, any positive number including 0, that's a whole number. Integers are any positive or negative number including 0, because remember 0 is neither positive nor negative. So integers is what we just talked about in this last unit, positive and negative whole numbers. So their whole numbers are just positive or negative. So examples would be like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. It's both all the negative numbers and all the positive numbers, and then also 0. Now rational numbers is what we're going to talk about today. Rational numbers are any integer, whole number. So rational numbers include whole numbers. They include integers. But, or they could also be a terminating decimal. Terminating just means that it ends. So that could be like 0 0.34. It ends at 4. It doesn't keep going on forever. Um, that's a terminating decimal. Or it could also be a repeating decimal. Okay, so it has a pattern that keeps repeating. It cannot be random um, decimals that just randomly go on forever. That would be an irrational number, okay, which we'll talk about those in seventh grade or next year. All right, so some examples of these would be, like I said, 0 0.34, that's a terminating decimal, could be 2.25, that's a terminating decimal. Um, it could be negative 2.25 as well. It could be positive or negative. It could also be like negative 1.3333, and that 3 goes on forever. We would write that as negative 1.3 with the repeating bar over the 3, because that's the number that keeps repeating. It could also be a decimal, such as... 0 0.151515, and that 15 repeats forever, we would write that as 0 0.15, and then that repeating bar would go over both the 1 and the 5, because those are the numbers that keep repeating. Alright, so that's just the vocab of what is a rational number. So we're going to convert fractions to decimals and decimals to fractions. Um, because in order to compare rational numbers, you either need them all to be fractions or all to be decimals. You can't compare a fraction to a decimal without having some way to compare them, such as like a common denominator in a fraction, or just written as a decimal. And we'll do some of that those examples later. Right now, we are just going to write fractions as decimals. Okay, so the foolproof way to write a fraction as a decimal is to divide the numerator by the denominator. This will always work. Okay. I will explain later that there's another way that you can um, do that, but it does not always work. Okay. So two fifths, two over five. We're dividing the numerator by the denominator, so the two goes inside the division box, the five goes outside. 5 can go into 2 0 times. We need to keep the problem going, so we add a decimal and a 0. 2 can go into 20 4 times. 5 times 4 is 20. We subtract. We're done. Our answer would be 0 and 4 tenths. 5 over 11. We are dividing 5 by 11. 11 can go into 5 zero times, so we add a decimal and a zero, and we keep going. 11 can go into 54 times. 11 times 4 is 44. 
we subtract. 50 minus 44 is 6. Add another 0 to keep the problem going. Bring it down. 11 can go into 65 times. That would be 55. Subtract. 60 minus 55 is 5. Add another 0. Bring it down. 11 can go into 54 times. So we'd subtract 44, we'd get 6, bring down a 0. You're going to notice that we have a repeating decimal here. It's going to keep going 4, 5, 4, 5, 4, 5. So we can stop once we notice that pattern, and we can just write it with a repeating bar. So 0 and 45 hundredths with the repeating bar over the 4 and the 5, because both those numbers keep repeating. All right, let's go on to number 3. Negative 2 and 1 fourth. First thing we have to do is make a mixed number improper. And then we can divide. So 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. So it's negative 9 fourths. We know that a negative divided by a positive, the answer is going to be negative. So let's just put that negative sign up in our answer. And then we can kind of forget about those negatives. 9 is being divided by 4. 4 can go into 9 two times. We subtract 8. We get 1. To keep the problem going, we add a decimal and a 0 to bring it down. 4 can go into 10 also 2 times. 4 times 2 is 8, so we subtract. Add a 0 to bring it down to keep the problem going. 4 can go into 25 times. 4 times 5 is 20. When we subtract, we are done. Our answer would be negative 2 in 25 hundredths. Okay. The second way that I was talking about you could make um, a fraction into a decimal is like, for example, let's take two-fifths, and we could get it to a denominator out of 10, 100, or 1,000, since we know that the decimal place are tenths, hundredths, thousandths, when we have the numbers after the decimal. So we can make two-fifths into tenths by multiplying by two on the bottom, multiplying by two on the top to get four-tenths. So that 4 would go in the tenths place, and it would be 0 0.4. And that's great. When the denominator is a 5, that's super easy to do. But when the denominator is an 11, you can't make 11 into 10 or into 100. So the only way to do that would be to divide. That's why I always default to dividing, because it always works. The denominator trick is nice, and it's easier, but it does not always work. Okay, now that we made fractions into decimals, let's make decimals into fractions or mixed numbers. So we are going to write the digits in the numerator. After the decimal, then look to see which place value the last digit is in. And we're going to use that number as the denominator. Okay, so for example, when we have a decimal, we have a whole number. Make sure you write this down. This will help us out with those place values. We have a whole number and then a decimal. So whether that is 0, whether that's 2, whether that's 12, we have some number in front of that decimal. Okay, then after the decimal, we, we're going to talk about three places. So the first place we call tenths. Second place we call hundredths. And then thousandths. All right, so for example, if we have like, you don't have to write this down, just follow along, 2.345. 2 is in the whole number spot. 3 is in the tenths, 4 is in the hundredths, 5 is in the thousandths. Okay. All right, so we write the numerator, the numbers after the decimal is in the numerator. So we've got 26. We look to see what place that 6 is in. That's going to be in the hundredths place, so we put a hundred in the denominator. Now it is negative, so we want to make that fraction negative. Last but not least, we have to simplify that fraction. So what can 26 and 100 both be divided by? 
we should be saying 2. That becomes negative 13 over 50. That is simplified, so that is our final answer. Here we have another negative. Then we have a 7 as the numerator, and the 7 is in the tenths place, so we have a 10 as a denominator. That cannot be simplified, so that is our final answer. When we have a whole number, that becomes our mixed number, so that becomes our number in front of the fraction. So that negative 3 goes in front of the fraction, negative 3, our numerator is 1, the 1 is in the tenths place, so 10 is our denominator. Okay, so that would be our final answer because one tenth cannot be simplified. Okay, now let's do an example of comparing and ordering rational numbers, least to greatest. Okay, most of the times we ask this question, we're going to put it least to greatest. Um, so we're going to do that even though this question doesn't really ask us to, but we're going to do that just because on like your test, on any quiz that you take, you're going to need to do that. The table shows the elevations of four two creatures relative to sea level. Okay, so sea level is where the water level is, and we're talking about their locations under the water. So for example, kilometers, the anglerfish is negative 13 tenths kilometer under the water. Okay, we want to know which of the sea creatures are deeper than the whale. We'll come back to that question. Okay, whenever you're comparing and ordering rational numbers, you need to make them all fractions, or all decimals. I highly, highly, highly suggest you make all the numbers decimals because even when you're looking at this example and you're like, well, Miss Lincoln, three of the examples are already fractions, why wouldn't I just make the last one a fraction? Because in order to compare fractions, we need a common denominator. So we need to make 10, 5, and 11 all into a common denominator, which 10 and 5 would be easy to do, but then with 11, not so easy. Um, so I think it's easiest to convert them all to decimals. You can convert them all to fractions. Like I said, it's just a little bit harder. Um, so it's up to you. I'm going to make them all decimals for this example because, like I said, I believe that that is the easiest way to do it. Negative 13 tenths, that is an improper fraction. So the first thing we want to do is make that into a mixed number. How many times can 10 go into 13? That's 1. We're going to put that negative sign in front of that 1. When we take away 10 of those 13 to make that 1, we have 3 tenths left, one and three tenths. So when we make that into a decimal, we have negative one as our whole number, and then we have three tenths. So if you think about that place value, three tenths, the three goes in the tenths place, so that would be negative 1.3. You could also do three divided by 10, and you would, again, get 0.3. Negative 2 and 1 fifth. Well, I see that 5 is easy to get to a 10, so I can use that same trick of that place value instead of doing the dividing because that 5 is easy to make into a 10. So this would become negative 2. 5 times 2 is 10. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. 1 times 2 is 2. So 2 and 1 fifth is the same thing as 2 and 2 tenths. Negative 2 is my whole number. 2 tenths, 2 is my numerator, the tenths place is the first one after the denominator, so that's where I put my 2. Again, you could do the long division, put 2 in the box, 10 outside, and you would get 0.2. Either way, it works. Now here's where we have that 11, so we can't make that into a 10 or a 100 or a 1,000 to use that place value trick like we did above, so we are actually going to divide that out. 2 goes in the box, 11 goes outside. 11 can go into 2 zero times, so we add a decimal and a zero to keep it going. 11 can go into 20 one time, subtract 11, that gives us 9. Add another zero to bring down. 11 can go into 90 eight times. 8 times 11 is 88, subtract, that's a 2, bring it down. 11 can go into 20 one time, subtract, that's a 9, add another 0, bring it down. 11 can go into 98 times. You should be seeing a pattern now that is going to keep repeating. Okay, so we can write this decimal as 0 0.18.
with the repeating bar over the 1 and the 8 because the 1 and the 8 both repeat. For the whale, we already have it as a decimal. So, oh, that's a negative, sorry. And then we can just rewrite it just so we have them all to compare to. Okay. These are our four numbers that we're going to use to compare. First, let's write them least to greatest. So the most negative number is the least. So the most negative number is negative 2.2. That's our squid. Okay, but when we write that list from least to greatest, we always want to put it back into the regular form. So that was negative 2 and 1 fifth. So this list is going to be our final answer. This list we're just going to use to start. The next most negative number is negative 1.3. The original form that they gave us for that number was negative 13 tenths. So when we make that list least to greatest, we got to put it back into that original form that it gave us in the problem. Then our next most negative number, if we think about, I like thinking about money, okay? So for example, this would be 18 cents and this would be 80 cents. So which one of those numbers would be more negative? The 80 cents would be more negative. That was negative 0 0.80, 0 and 80 hundredths, which in the form that they gave us was negative 0 and 8 tenths. Last but not least, we have the shark, which is negative 0 and 18 hundredths repeating, which in the form that they gave us was negative 2 elevenths. Okay, now the question asks us which of the sea creatures are deeper than the whale. The whale is the negative 8 tenths, so the sea creatures that are deeper would be these ones. Okay, so the anglerfish and 2 and 1 fifth, the squid are deeper than the whale. Okay, so keep in mind if this question were asking us to list least to greatest, which it wasn't, but if it does, make sure we always put them back into the original form that the problem gave us, so this one would be our final answer for that. All right. I know I kind of went into the summary, um, but if you were able to fit it on your page somewhere else, um, take some time and write a one to two sentence summary, just kind of reviewing what you learned today.